Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz today on Lee Chess. So yeah, let's see how it goes. I'll try to be as instructive as possible throughout the game. Got the black pieces, so we'll play the Karukan defense, c6, d5. A very solid opening for black. Okay, he develops the knight, so we can take on the pawn here. He's trying to threaten the pawn capture, so developing the knight first. He develops the other knight, so let's get the bishop out. It's not that just we are trying to hold on to the pawn, but developing the pieces is the main focus here. Just trying to kick away the knight now, also making space for retrieval of the bishop. He gets the third attacker, which is completely okay. Um, a good way can be to pin the knight there, but he will develop the bishop with the process, so let's just kick away the knight. Now he takes the pawn. We take back, he takes with the knight. We take back. And he takes finally back <laughs> the knight and everything gets exchanged up. That is just one possible way to continue from here on. He gets the pawn back, which he lost. Yep. He takes. Let's exchange the knight at least. Here, it's a tricky thing because I can catch him the pawn as well. Yep, I think I should capture the pawn. He saves the knight. Which gives me a slight chance to capture another pawn. No, I can't. If I go for that capture, he takes the bishop. So I maintain that one pawn lead so far. Let's get back completely. Oh, it doesn't make much sense anywhere else. We can now just proceed with normal development. The center pawn goes to e6 and then followed by bishop on f5, c5, sorry. Okay, he gets his queen here. Yep, he's trying to castle the... Can I just play b5 here, pushing the queen away. And now a5, threatening to play a4. Yep, let's play. He goes back. Can I change queens here? I'm pawn up. But is it required? I doubt. We'll try to take on the knight with the bishop. From here, that makes more sense. And then we can castle on the king side. So it would be pretty solid. He is trying to threaten on to take g7. So just castling here. Yeah. 
if he gets the rook now on the empty file, aligning to attack on the bishop with a couple of pieces, then I'll just take on the knight. He doesn't, he's trying to break the pawn chain. Let's get the rook. Chances of discovery after I move the bishop now. So he has to move the queen away. Let's see where he takes the queen. Oh, he doesn't take it anywhere. Rather just increasing the attack on my rook. So here I can just develop the knight as well. Now I can again go for the discover attack as the rook is defended by a couple of pieces now. The queen as was the rook. Now we can take on the knight for sure with the bishop, at least for now. Let's see what he moves. He cannot allow the bishop right away. There's no such good option for him. He's trying to exchange queens maybe then. Uh, can trouble him a bit more maybe by moving the bishop as well. Yep, let's do it. Making it hard for the queen to survive. He takes with the knight. Can I first capture on the pawn? No, I can't. I have to take away this knight from here. Otherwise, just threatening mate. And we follow up with a check with the bishop. And we take on the rook. Which he takes back. I have to bring back the bishop now. Still maintaining that one pawn lead that I had from the beginning. I have to be careful with the pawn once. That's it, probably. He's trying to threaten, check. I move, but. Can just play the pawn ahead. Doesn't look very comfortable. Mm, another option as well, I guess. So let's move the pawn. I have the dark square bishop with me, so should be helpful. Threatening to take on the pawn now, so first moving the pawn ahead. Okay. Tax square bishop here would be helpful because he's trying to get his queen in here. Now the bishop can come back and defend everything. Looks good now. In control at least. Time is getting closer. Let's take on the pawn. Looks like a free pawn. Pawns are very important if it goes to end game. At least I would have something to play with. Let's attack the rook. He is tracking the queen. Have to move the queen here, no other option. Can you exchange queens? That should be helpful. I'll try to play a bit fast now. He takes and take back. He leaves the rook. Okay. I'll take on the pawn as well. Defending. The last rank weakness. Attacking the dark square bishop now.
trying to pin the bishop. Let's take the pawn again. Three pawns and the bishop goes. Falling like cards now. Let's just stop this. Rook from going forward and finish off the pawn. Completely winning position now. Just push the pawn forward and relax. Get the queen. Check. He takes. Win on time. Simple. And position as well. So comfortable win here. Uh, took on the pawn in the beginning. And that's what was the main factor throughout the game. Maintain that pawn lead. Didn't let that go. It was mate in four from here. Let's quickly analyze the game once. Side off with e4, followed by c6, d5. He played d4 and then I played d5. So the cow can't defense. And he didn't neither exchanged it or advanced it. So I had the option. So I took on the pawn, free pawn, as I said. Always take the free pawns, but evaluate if everything is still sa safer from your side. He develops the knight now, uh, moves away the knight, attacking the pawn as well. Uh, here I develop the knight, uh, defending the pawn. He gets the other knight as well developed. I play bishop to f5, uh, again, controlling the pawn as much as possible. He plays queen uh, to e2 here. I could have directly captured the pawn, but I went for kicking away the knight first. He takes the pawn. I take back. He takes with the knight, and then I take the free pawn. Uh, he moves away the knight, and I get back the bishop. Best moves there. He tries to kick away the queen, and the queen goes back to d8. Uh, not the most optimum square, because I'm pushing it backwards, uh, making sure that it's not developed again. So going back is a it's not a very good option but was pretty much happy with it because i had taken a pawn lead uh, already in the game uh, he develops his queen now to c4 so first e6 uh, blocking the queen's diagonal in just in case and then he develops the light square bishop on e2 and here i just move forward my pawns on b5 kicking the queen away to b3 and then again a5 here, a bit passive, but good enough. He castles, and I play a4 with the tempo. Uh, he goes back, offering queen exchange. Computer is saying you can take or just develop the knight. I played queen to c7 here. Uh, I like the c7 square for the queen, especially when I'm playing with the, the black. And then I can just probably put my bishop and... Sorry. Uh, I can probably put the bishop here and attack... Uh, the knight that is the whole plan so that's what I tried to do in the game he played uh, queen to d4 and I castle because of course he was eyeing the diagonal taking the g7 pawn I castle he plays c4 here a bad move okay could have punished him more but I went with rook to d8 or the safer option making sure some discovered tanks can happen any point of time. He aligns the rook and I move knight to b6, another best move as per the computer, just making sure that pieces are defended properly. He goes with his queen to g4. And here I lost the light square bishop. I actually didn't, should have first taken the knight maybe and then developed the bishop. Uh, something missed over there. He takes uh, and now I first take the pawn back. Uh, sorry, I take the knight back with the pawn. He captures. I take back the again, again the free pawn uh, that I had to take uh, just to maintain that lead. I took on uh, h2 here. He moves away. I take the rook. He takes back with the bishop. Now I have to retrieve the bishop because uh, one of the threats is that if he plays uh, pawn to g2, my dark square bishop gets trapped over there. So that's something which you should always be cautious about when you are taking on the edge pawn though could have first got the rook as well on the d file threatening to take on the bishop so that was also fine but i got the bishop back he gets his light square bishop on c2 attacking the long diagonal trying to just kick my 
king into the open files and then eventually can get his rook into the attack as well. So, uh, nice thought from him, but here I just played uh, g6, uh, making sure that the queen is pretty much helpless. Uh, now, the pawn is hanging uh, the, with the bishop. So, just moving the pawn to uh, h5. He goes uh, on the g5 with his queen and I play bishop to e5, the idea being that I can always come back on the diagonal just in case queen comes uh, on the h6. Here he gets his dark square bishop on e3. I take on a free pawn. Uh, computer says thing that okay, he can get the rook in between. But if he does, I'll just go back. Uh, yes, there is some extra pawn can be lost from here, but I was pawn ahead, so could have afforded to. And he played uh, rook to e1 there. I tried to attack the rook with the bishop. He attacks the queen. And I take the queen to d8. Uh, and here he exchanges the queen. So there was one more line here possible that he can bring the rook on e7. Of course, I can't take. I can't get back the bishop. Yeah, the best move could have been difficult to find. This wouldn't have been the case. I would have rather probably played this. And then he can sack a bishop there. Okay, and I can give a check, move him forward. And then I have to exchange the queens. Plus the pawn would be hanging. Uh, the pawn on b5 is not stable. So yeah, the game could have turned there. But of course, that was a tricky move to be found. Uh, rook generally, you won't see that uh, it would come to the e7 rather. Uh, generally, it's threatening the e8. So he took on the queen uh, as because of the time pressure as well. I take back with the rook. Uh, he takes the pawn. I took on the rook. He takes my knight as well. Uh, I take another free pawn again, just capturing on pawns wherever possible. He ha he hung his bishop over there, uh, which probably I was more focused on the pawn at that point of time. That it should not proceed further, uh, making sure it's not promoted to queen. Um, and then he saves the bishop. I try to attack the dark square bishop. He saves with the pawn. I go to uh, b4 here. He moves this king to uh, g2. I get the rook on b2. He goes ahead. I take on the pawn, making sure that there's always an open file for the pawn to be promoted to queen in the latter half of the game. He moves the king away. Uh, now, this time I take the bishop. Uh, and then just saving the rook and... Proceeding, uh, just blocking the B file now so that the rook doesn't, and the king doesn't enter the B file or threaten the A pawn, and I can just simply promote it. And that's what happened. He takes, I take back. I've got a rook now, and the pawn cannot be stopped. So I get the queen, and then just trying to find some mating sequence, and he resigns. It was mating four from here. So a good game uh, was in most part of the game. I was in control of it. Um, just will quickly run through a computer analysis as well. Let's see oh, how many blunders computer is selling because yep, uh, there were a couple of them which I remember now. Uh, but still was pretty much in control as I said throughout the game. Uh, it depends on how the opponent is also playing. So yeah. Um, There's a famous quote I remember uh, my friend was telling me that uh, uh, to have a brilliant uh, moves in a game, both the players have to play uh, very nice, very close to perfect, which is a very rare case. Like grandmasters play at that level uh, when you are just learning chess and playing online with some 1900, 2000 rated players, there's always scope of some errors from both the sides. So you, your moves will be pretty much uh, equal in, in the sense, not uh, that much difference in uh, moves there uh, impact was i'm trying to say uh, yep was in control as i said some mistakes and blunders for sure three mistakes three blunders still calculating but as i said was completely in favor of uh, the, the black side here from the beginning itself because he lost a pawn there only one point of time he had an advantage of 1.3 but again then 
he couldn't capitalize on that because he had to find the best move there by moving rook to e7 which was a pretty tough move i believe in that kind of situation and time pressure that given that so yeah uh, again a good game and i hope there was something to learn from there uh, keep playing the karo khan defense i i love it playing from black uh, very solid for black always gives good results at least you are in control of the opening part and then from there it's up to you and your creativity how you just uh, make the board pretty much active for your all the pieces from there on i hope like you like the video please do comment and share your feedback uh, would like to improve from here on as always thanks for so much for your time take care bye bye